Well, AMD's apparently got a new GPU coming out and it's listed right here on Sapphire's website. So I think we can say this isn't just a rumor, but we can also say this is weird. Like, ah, let's, let's dig into this a little bit. First of all, you might be like, there's already a 6700. There's a 6700 XT. We don't just have a 6700. And notice I'm not saying RX 6700. This is just listed as the Pulse AMD Radeon 6700. There's no RX in front. Now it's unclear to me why that branding piece would be left off of this particular GPU model, which again means I think we might wanna dig a little bit further into this. We can see some of the specs and, and this is a, a, a Pulse model. It does seem like there's also a just kind of 6700 without being listed as Pulse. And if we compare its specifications, and I believe video cards already pulled this up in a different, uh, one of their charts they do over here. So we'll do this and ah, link to everything I do in the description of the video as usual. If we throw this in line with the uh, other specs for, for AMD GPUs, first of all, again, the naming just feels so weird here. We're seeing the no RX in front. <laughs> now, if we look at it compared to the 6700 XT, we see um, compared to the 2560 stream processors on that one, we're going down to uh, 2308. Although the 6650 and 6600, which are our next step down, are 2048. So uh, we are, you know, splitting the difference there. <laughs> Um, between those two. Now, another interesting thing is we're dropping down from 12 gigabytes of memory on the 6700 XT to 10 gigabytes on the 6700, but that's still more than the eight gigabytes that we get on the uh, 6600 XT and 6650 XT. Uh, it looks like we're expecting the 16 gigabit per second memory on our non-50 models, right? This isn't a 6750. And the T, uh, TBP is listed at 220 watts. What we don't have here yet is a price. Now, according to rumors that actually popped out before this was officially listed, it looked like the uh, launch date here would be June 9th with a price tag of 569 euro, euros. And this was because it was listed at Calcott Land um, on sale here before it got officially placed on Sapphire's website. So this is interesting. Now there's some speculation here um, on this video cards article that I think is pretty interesting. Uh, one of them is right here. Uh, one can also, uh, also cannot ignore the fact that one of these cards looks identical to the crypto mining model called BC2235G Pro X080. So What's going on here? Was this a crypto mining card or a, a card that Sapphire had been marketing to crypto miners, but because crypto mining has crashed so hard, that market's drying up. And so they're now redirecting this GPU into the gaming market. Um, another interesting thing that Video Cards points out here is that there's no packaging shown in these photos, which can be a bit unusual, which does that indicate this would be an OEM only model. So we'll just get this in pre-built rather than something that we'll be able to buy on the DIY market. But again, we did see this Calcott land, um, you know, image leaked out here that did have packaging and seemed to be up for, for direct sale. So I'm not too sure about that point. Now, um, so what I think we're also seeing is that this looks like a mobile 6700. <laughs> so this is basically an RX 6700M, a mobile 6700, but packaged onto a desktop uh, board and, and, and GPU. And then um, that also means that it could then run a lot faster because you could increase the power limit. Obviously your mobile chip is gonna have lower power and thermal constraints, whereas the desktop part can be, uh, you know, uh, can push that uh, boundary <laughs> compared to what you'd wanna be doing on a laptop. So anyway, very strange card overall. It looks basically like it's gonna be a 6700M with more power but can uh, go in desktops. We don't get the RX branding, all sorts of weirdness, but let's jump into NVIDIA doing their own weird shenanigans 
which is let's launch a new GTX 1600 series card. Let's launch a 1630. Um, now, video cards had already announced this from their own sources, and it was supposed to theoretically launch, I think, at the end of May. I think it was May 31st. But they're now saying that that launch date has been shifted to June 15th, and that the card is reportedly slower than a GTX 1050 Ti. Now, again, they're just saying that, that they have received this new launch date. They're receiving this information from their own sources. So like if you uh, try to get down to where they list their sources, they don't list sources. It's just their own private personal sources here. So I, I can't tell you the validity of that. Although I will say that usually when Video Cards does list something as from their own sources, that they are pretty confident on that. And we usually end up seeing something come from that. And do notice that we're actually, like, like they're, they're publishing an actual screen capture of the embargo timeline for this. So this does seem pretty legit. Now, one thing that's interesting here is that there's this embargo lift for both the on-shelf time on June 15th and the marketing activity on June 15th, but it doesn't show a review embargo release date, at least in this screenshot. Um, and, and they're actually saying that they don't, they don't see that in the document that they have. So that could definitely mean that review samples of this aren't being sent out. Um, don't know that for sure, but that definitely could be what that means. Now, they've confirmed the specs of this thing, which we can look at here in this chart. Basically, it's based on the 12 nanometer Turing TU117-150 GPU. Uh, so you can look at that compared to like the GTX 1650, or uh, which also uses a 12 nanometer Turing TU 117, but that's the 300. And notice that this is definitely weaker. This has 512 CUDA cords compared to 896. It does look like it will boost higher than that 1650 model. Uh, only have the four gigabytes of GDDR6. Notice the memory bus is cut in half compared to the 1650. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of cuts here, which is uh, interesting. So, you know, if this comes in with a low enough power draw, like 75 watts, I mean, maybe it's interesting as some kind of a uh, low profile card if it had a cheap enough price on it. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and move on to how about the 4000 series cards, which I'm sure a lot of people are a bit more excited about than a 1630. Well, it's looking like we're getting even more rumors pointing not just to RTX 4090 coming in August, but even getting into when are we seeing the 4080 and the 4070. Previously, we had seen 4080 and 4070 coming after the 4090, but we're now seeing actual months. It looks like a once per month release cadence is at least the current plan that's being leaked. So that would be 4090 in August, RTX 4080 in September, RTX 4070 in October. Once again, I believe this information, again, they are not crediting a source here. They're just saying we have some new information. So this appears to be video cards giving their own sources who want to remain private at this point. So again, hard to me to weigh in on what the track record here uh, is other than uh, video cards does seem to have good sources from time to time and, and get their own info like this. Um, there's also a little bit about the board design for some of these as well. Um, but anyway, uh, th that is looking to be the plan. And, and to get further into this, uh, we're also seeing from Igor's lab some information about uh, the, the planning timeline as well as the actual circuit board here. So this looks like the circuit board for R4090 and they're um, comparing it to the 3090 Ti. And then they're also getting into a uh, list of, of you know, what, what's going on with this and, and the timelines. So according to Igor's lab, we're seeing that the bill of materials release for this uh, is June 2022. Uh, engineering and validation tests, design validation tests coming soon after that. Looks like they're getting into work sample uh, in mid-July with production validation tests in the end of July, beginning of August, and of course, uh, the final uh, source BIOS and start of mass production going into August, September. So if start of mass production happens in August, maybe seeing that August release date for this 
um, you know, kind of confirmed. This doesn't say August release date, but this is just another source may, uh, saying a similar time frame for when this GPU could be ready. Now, they do say that um, th this hasn't all necessarily been uh, exactly confirmed, but it could all change. One of the main issues could be that AIBs still have lots of RTX 30 inventory uh, left, so they probably aren't in favor of the new GPUs coming out anytime soon. Um, and this would actually go along with, we're seeing reports of quarter one, 2022, seeing a decline in GPU and PC shipments quarter to quarter, as well as year to year. 19% year to year, uh, I believe is down a, a lot uh, more than we would normally expect. I think a lot of that's due to, you know, the, the crypto mining uh, fall off, as well as if, you know, a bunch of people bought extra last year because of the whole pandemic thing, then maybe they're not as into buying more right now. Hey, how about the Core i9-13900K? We've got some rumors here coming from uh, a Pokemon. Back to getting to our Pokemon and Digimon being our sources of information. Well, it's looking like one Raichu on Twitter who once again has leaked accurate information in the past. So it is worth taking a little more seriously about this stuff than your average Pokemon. Says greater than 2300 single thread score in Geekbench 5 is possible. And this appears to be talking about the, um, you know, the, the i9-13900K. Uh, okay, so what does that mean? Well, this WCCF Tech article that I'm pulling up here is now comparing it to the 12900K's single-thread performance in Geekbench 5, which is 1936, and to the Ryzen 9 5950X single-thread performance, which is 1689. And that if you then calculate what that means percentage-wise, that would be showing a 15% uplift over the Alder Lake CPU and a 35% improvement over the 5950X Zen 3. Now, uh, interesting. I mean, that a 15% jump on the same motherboard and, and all of that compatibility uh, for the single thread. And then if they're also throwing in uh, more cores and all of that. This this is very interesting to what it could mean overall. Now, speaking of that, there have been uh, some leaks of an Intel 24 core desktop Raptor Lake CPU along with an ARC A770 GPU spotted together in a new leak. Basically, they just, um, th this was spotted by Tum Apisak. Apisak? I don't know. But this comes from user benchmarks. So the data here, um, I don't know. I don't want to dive into it, but user benchmarks is is not 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 good. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but the point is, uh, we're at least seeing these um, you know being tested on that platform. And, and now the ARC A770 graphics score was absolutely horrible. It's literally listed as terrible. That that's their description for it. Whereas the uh, CPU is getting an outstanding score. But again, this could either mean that this GPU just doesn't like this benchmark or that, you know, the drivers weren't ready or all sorts of things. Now, the drivers not being ready for Intel, uh, you know, seems to be probably why we haven't got those yet. Now, how about the Ryzen 7000 Raphael CPUs allegedly having a max frequency of 5.85 gigahertz? We saw AMD show off 5.5 and a little bit higher in, uh, in a gaming uh, workload, but we're seeing uh, info that 5.85 could be possible. So could this be AMD sandbagging and we're you know really gonna get 5.8? Now, to be fair here, I believe when I dug into these uh, sources, the source here is Angstronomics. Now, why does that matter? Because as far as I could tell, this is like a brand new site that doesn't really have a lot of a track record here. I think this was literally like the second article that they posted. So um, I'll put a big question mark on, on, on that information, but cool if we see it. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if AMD is trying to under promise so that they can then over deliver when they actually get reviews and everybody gets really positive uh, coverage for that, but we'll see. Now, uh, a few uh, last little things. How about the Steam Deck's docking station has been officially delayed due to all sorts of pandemic and parts shortage related issues. So if you're waiting for that, too bad. <laughs> 
um, wait a little bit longer. Now, how about more um, PC uh, games coming from Sony's previously uh, exclusive lineup? It looks like we're seeing Marvel's Spider-Man coming to PC on August 12th. Um, with Miles Morales also coming to PC, but I think that one's going to take a little bit longer. This came up in the June 2nd, 2022 uh, Sony's State of Play live stream. So interesting. I'm very excited to see more PlayStation exclusives come to PC because the main reason I still buy a console these days other than a Switch for my kids is, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, play the exclusives. Anyway... Um, how about uh, more handheld consoles from a &Neo with RDNA 2 graphics? Now, these ones are a bit more expensive, but these are with the Ryzen 6000U APU with the Zen 3 Plus architecture. I believe the Steam Deck only has Zen 2 Plus, Zen 2, I think. I don't know. But I know the R RDNA 2 chips. Um, now, this is interesting. We had reported on much, much cheaper ones with RDNA 2 graphics, but those were Mendocino, or Mendocino, whichever way I'm supposed to be pronouncing that, uh, for a lot less money. But since then, it's come out. We've got some leaked specs uh, for the AMD Mendocino or Mendocino uh, uh, APU, which points to the RDNA 2 graphics. Yay, RDNA 2, only two compute units. Aw, oh, sad face. So if we look at this slide here, uh, which seems to have been leaked, um, we are seeing it listed as two compute units. So two compute units, even if they're RDNA 2, is not going to be fantastic for gaming. All right, guys, we're caught up on the news, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.